What's up guys? Keeping it real fishing here. Thanks so much for checking out the video. There's a new swim bait reel in the game. 13 fishing. Concept day three. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks so much for checking out the video and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. Today, as you already know, by clicking on the video, we're gonna be taking a look at this guy right here. It's the new series of reels coming out from 13 Fishing to accompany their also new series of swim bait rods. Yes, 13 Fishing is making a complete offering for all of you out there who are pursuing those big fish uh, by way of big baits and you wanna get into swim bait fishing. 13 Fishing is now a player. There's now an option, uh, another option amongst manufacturers. So 13 Fishing is coming out with this guy, the A3, and let's uh, open it up, take a look, and go over some of the features and benefits of this new reel. Okay guys, so uh, first thing you see right off the bat, very cool, I like this, is that 13 is providing you not only the traditional paddle handle, but also a power handle. This is going to be more geared towards uh, in inshore fishermen and saltwater use for some truly big fish who can make those powerful runs in open water. But the fact of the matter is you don't have to buy it separate. It comes with the reel, which is really nice. Let's take a look what you get inside. Uh, 13 Fishing does a pretty good job. We have a 13 Fishing sticker, pretty cool. We have another one here, another type of sticker there. Here's your parts breakdown sheet. Pretty small, actually, very small, but everything that you would uh, need should you have any failures and you're comfortable taking apart your reel. If you want to service it and oil it, uh, this could uh, help you if you want to get into the some of the more uh, inner realms of the reel. Okay, and we have a little bit of foam on top. That's good. Keep it nice in transit. Here is the reel, and here is the power handle. Okay, so let's put this stuff here away and take a closer look at the reel and some of its features. Now right here on the box guys, 13 Fishing, uh, someone in the marketing department has a, a great imagination for um, features and really cool little <laughs> pictures to kind of uh, conceptualize the idea. So let's run through these. Um, actually, you know what, let's take a look at the reel and as we're looking at the reel, we're going to kind of tag back and, and see what these features are as we uh, go through things. So guys, First thing you can see, here's the reel. Now right off the bat, for those of you guys who are familiar with 13 Fishing, uh, maybe many of you own some 13 Fishing equipment, it should come as no surprise to you that this looks like more or less a clone of the smaller 100 size 13 Fishing Concept A reel. Uh, and I think that's probably intentional. Uh, that uh, was a very well received reel. It's very popular. It's, uh, it's a good reel, functions fine. It's been in the market for a few years now. And just everything is here and has been scaled up a little bit. We're moving from a 100 size to a 300 size. So the reel itself you can see is, uh, is much larger. It has a very, very open design. There you can see the deep spool, uh, the uh, longer uh, paddles here. There's a, uh, this is a, a greater diameter than on the, the regular uh, 100 size reel. And uh, as you would expect, it's just a larger overall reel. So guys, making our way from the side here, uh, yes, we have the paddle handles back. I think most people really like these, uh, although I have heard some people that to them they feel it's just a little bit too big and chunky. But that's pretty much the deal uh, with these cork handles, guys. I think they're really cool looking. Um, cork handles almost always are an aftermarket option uh, that you can buy, but here they come stock on the 13 fishing reel. You can see how thick they are, and they have the 13 kind of, almost looks like it's burnt, uh, into them there. It's a very cool look to it. There you can see it in my hand. It's uh, it's quite meaty and you can get a really good purchase on it. 
Moving in from there, you can see the styling of the reel. We have the black uh, and the black anodized and some cutaways here where you see the silver of the metal. Clicking star drag, clicking cast control knob, moving over to the, the clutch. You can see the 13 fishing logo and uh, it is a little bit of rubberized there. Okay. To the front of the reel, we have one of our features here. This is the Arrowhead Line Guide. You can kind of see where they get that name from there. It's vertical and they kind of flare it out, or taper a little, little bit to the edges. So it's a, quite an open design. It's not like the T-Wing system from Daiwa. It's nothing like that. But it is a pretty free-flowing area for which your line to be able to pass through and get out. And on the side here, guys, Concept A3. On the bottom, there's not much to speak of there. There's your worm gear. Again, a very, very open design. If you see, I hold it in my hand. Just a lot of air there. Very, very easy to thumb it. Um, I haven't had too many backlashes, but uh, when reels are very open like this, to me, it just helps to be able to pick things out if you were to get one. And now over here on this side plate, guys, um, by the way, this is a carbon side plate, and that's one of our features. And I guess now would be a good time to look at some of those. We have the beetle wing side plate. Uh, trick shop compatible so you can get all sorts of uh, aftermarket parts direct from 13 so you know they're going to fit perfectly with this because they're coming right from the manufacturer. Ham gearing and this stands for hard as a mother. <laughs> so uh, it's a big brass gear, the main drive gear in here is a very very large brass gear and they say that it's been hardened up to 30% more than some of the competitors. So that's kind of political language there. We don't know who the competitors are or up to. It could mean anything. It can mean 10%, but apparently this is, at least compared to one competitor, 37% harder, uh, which is good. But the main thing is it's a brass gear. It's, uh, you know, it's going to last you a long time. It's very robust stuff. Uh, Japanese Hamai, I think I'm saying that right, cut gearing. This to me carries actually a little bit more weight. Um, that Hamai, I've seen that term used before. I think that's the same kind of, I think it's like a digital cutting system. I think that's pretty much the equivalent of um, Daiwa's DigiGear. Same thing, just means that your cuts are very, very fine, your gears mesh perfectly, and you just don't feel that drag or resistance from it. But the reality is, guys, I think on most modern reels, unless you're buying something very inexpensive, most of our reels, when you turn them these days, they're pretty darn smooth. So it's nice that we have that, um, but you know, it's not a, a, the biggest thing in the world. Six ways uh, centrifugal brake. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. Uh, you know, again, here's, here's cool things. I got like the skull and cross things and anti uh, dead stop, anti reverse. You know, oh, dead stop. It's an anti reverse bearing, guys. You know, as, as you would expect in a bait cast reel. Airfoil carbon. Um, that's referring to this side plate here. This one is a carbon side plate, whereas the rest of the reel, the main frame, and this side plate are aluminum. Dead armor, or I'm sorry, ocean armor. Um, this is important, although I can't speak too much to it because I, I fish strictly freshwater. But for you, those of you who are fishing saltwater, this would be very important. This is a saltwater rated reel, so you could feel comfortable using it on the ocean. I imagine you'd still want to rinse it off, but it's nothing that you have to worry about it uh, corroding very quickly. The concept cork knobs, we just took a look at those. 30 plus with this big bowl. They're talking about pounds of drag force, 30 pounds of drag. Again, as a freshwater angler, specifically someone who's looking for bass, albeit large bass, this is more than I or you would ever need. But again, going to those saltwater fishermen who may uh, be using this reel, that's a pretty important number. More important than the number though is the smoothness of the drag, and that's something that I like to try to uh, feel in hand, and uh, I'll let you know, uh, at least to me, how, how smooth it feels. The arrowhead casting system, we took a quick look at that. And the anti-corrosion yeah, anti corrosion bearings. Now that's important also too. I have found that my reels that utilize uh, anti-corrosion bearings, they really do hold up significantly longer than the non-anti-corrosion. So I mean, I just seem to get caught out in the rain a lot. It hasn't been, it's not, you know, there's been a few times where my reels have accidentally gotten dunked in the water. Um, and so having those bearings really does make a big difference. And uh, it's a feature that I always like to see. All right, guys, so we have all those cool pictures. Now let's take a look at the reel. Talked about the cork knobs, the arrowhead. Uh, let's go to this side here and take a look at the beetle wing system. Now, 
the way that you're going to access your six pin centrifugal brake, which is housed inside of here, is through this little escape hatch door. You can see it's pretty straightforward. Open and close. Um, so if we push that down, that works nice and easy. Very reminiscent of the Shimano system uh, used on the Corrado, the Kronarks, and you know all the reels of old, actually the previous generation. Same basic principle, but actually our hinge is at the front instead of the back. Um, you just flip that switch, and I love that it does stay attached. It's spring-loaded, uh, so the so it wants to pop off on its own. That spring wants to force it out, and then it's you know it's just attached. You can go in and make your changes. If we take a close look at the braking system here, you can see that it's one of those deals whereas you have to hold the spool, because this is all one assembly, or actually we could just take it out. So there you go. It's all just one assembly. And what you do is you just click it along. Very easy to do. You can see that it has teeth here around the perimeter. It's very, very easy to grab. And of course, the number that you click to will uh, determine how many brake weights are engaged. So if we put that back in here. I could actually show you them. They're actually they're just quite small. Let me put it on three. Is that three? That's three. Close it back up. Give it a whirl. Okay, centrifugal force should have thrown those little weights out. And let's take a look at those little guys. Let's get a focus going here. And there you can see there's one on top. There is one right there. And you'll see that they are equal to each other or they're the distance between them. So it's not three in a row. Um, people always used to talk about this with the Shimano braking system, like you should put your pins opposite each other. And so it's not something you have to think about here because this, as you select it, it's engaging the appropriate pins. Not only the number of pins, but where they come out. And the third one is right in there. You can probably see it just barely. You notice they are very, very small but they do an effective job. And in here is the, the raceway. Those are the, that's the metal runner that the pins are sliding against to slow your cast and to prevent a, a backlash. And then there you could also see the, uh, the other spool bearing. There's one in there. And there is one right there. Uh, this is a little funny to me here. This reel does uh, hold a good amount of line. If we could focus on that piece but they're rating it with a pound test that I think very few people would put on here. So line capacity is 240 yards of 12, which is nice, but I think most people, if we're talking mono or fluoro or copoly, are going to be putting on at least 17 plus, 17, 20, or even 25. Uh, for braided line, um, I would assume that people are going to be putting on at least 50 pound braid or 65 pound braid just because of the diameter. Otherwise, you'd be holding an obscene amount of line. Uh, again, coming back to saltwater guys, maybe if you saltwater guys and fish that can make long, powerful runs, you might be stepping down into lower pound braid just to have a lot more on the spool there. All right, guys, so that's the basics. That's the once over and the walk around on the reel. I'll put this one to the side. And what I'd like to show you here is my other one. Now, this was just the tabletop, guys. The next stop we're going to do is out to the water. And uh, we're going to talk about the real meat and potatoes. Let's talk about my experience with it, my opinions, um, and basically, you know, how it fishes on the water. Now, this one here, guys, was actually a pre-production model. I had the opportunity to get this a little bit early. I kind of won some contest. And so not only the 13 fishing swim bait rods, but I got this reel last, uh, the beginning of fall, actually the end of summer. So I have, minus the winter where I wasn't fishing, I have about five months of fishing time on this and I have put it through its paces regularly. I've allocated this reel to my largest heaviest rod throwing my largest heaviest baits and so I've really put the stress on it and made sure you know that nothing uh, was going to break or not made sure but you know to test it to see if it could handle things like a six and a half ounce 10 inch depths 250. That's pretty much what I've been throwing on this about 80% of the time is chucking that 250 out there and I've had absolutely no problems whatsoever. The reel is perfectly smooth. It's actually even smoother than when I got it. And uh, honestly, it's just, it's been uh, a very, very nice reel. So guys, now what I'd like to do is take it out to the field and uh, let's get down to brass tacks. Should you buy this over Daiwa or Shimano? These are the big questions here, right? Let's, let's keep it real. 
you got your hard-earned money, is this worth it? Should you play safe and go with your established brands, or is this on a level playing field as the big names? Um, does it bring anything to the table? Do all that fancy features and emblems, does it equate, do these features equate to real benefit to you, the angler, out on the water? Is it a stronger reel? Is it going to cast farther? Is it doing anything that other reels don't do? And at the end of the day, having fished it so long, you know, would I, well, I got this one for free, but would I buy it? And would I recommend that you, you know, take your money and buy it? And basically, is it a quality piece of gear that you should trust, particularly in the pursuit of large trophy fish where failure is not an option? Let's have a change of settings, guys. We've been here at the tabletop for a while. Let's get out into the field, on the water, and discuss those points. All right, guys, so let's talk about the reel in hand. What, is it, what does it feel like, and what's the interface like, the experience of, of actually fishing it? Uh, this is gonna be everything except for casting. That's gonna be something else. In hand, the main thing that you need to know is how small it is. You know, this isn't one of the features that manufacturers typically tout. They'll talk about lightweight, but form factor is, is big. A lot of people, form factor is big, but a lot of people like a very compact, small reel. And as a 300 size reel goes, this one is really, really small. Um, and I find that that's kind of the trend in the market is that all reels, right, are just tending to get smaller and smaller. And uh, this one here really encompasses that ideology for a 300 size reel. Uh, it is appreciably smaller than the Corrado 300. For any of you guys that have that, you're going to notice immediate, first thing when you pick it up is how, how much smaller it is. But then even more so, um, like the Akuma, the, uh, the, I think the Citrix, the 364s and stuff like that, it's, it's like half the size. Those are so much bigger and they're all considered to be 300 size reels. So that's the main thing is the size. Apart from that, guys, uh, coming back to those cork knobs, uh, we've touched on that, I think, at the tabletop. It's a meaty knob. And uh, I think particularly for power fishing, for swim baits and for, for saltwater fishing, I think this is a good knob. You know, it's not rubberized, but that cork um, doesn't get hot, it doesn't get cold. When it's wet, I've had this in the rain multiple times, you still have good grip. Um, it's cool looking. You have those kind of uh, branded, it's almost branding like on a cattle there or whatever, the uh, 13 logos. Uh, they're very smooth. I guess they're on bearings. There's no play in them. Um, the overall feel in hand, I guess in a word, it feels solid, precise, and quality. Um, some other things, guys, the uh, drag start is clicking. I think we mentioned that at the tabletop review. And one other thing I want to mention about this out here is the, uh, the cast control knob. It's a clicky. Let's see if we can, oh, I got my, uh, my mic going here. Hopefully you guys can hear that. But it's, it's kind of quiet, and, and you know, the clicky doesn't matter. You don't need this. Most Shimano reels don't use the clicky. But I should just mention, because a lot of people look for this, and this is kind of a, uh, a feature that um, is, is expected on better reels, the clicks are kind of rudimentary in that they're so far apart from one click to the next that I often find that the right place I need it for the amount of tension is between the clicks and not actually on them. So. Um, it's not a big deal, guys, but, but just so you know, it's not like a precision piece. Like I have a, um, a Daiwa Ryoga, and that's like, it's like a jeweler's piece. Like the clicks are like ultra close together, and it, it just feels really, really nice. Performance-wise, it, it has no bearing whatsoever. You can dial this into exactly where you need it to be, but just, um, you know, it, it's something that could be improved. I mean, that's one of the things you interface with, and this is not a high-end reel, but it's also not cheap. And uh, if that was a little bit more precise or had a little bit more feedback, you know, it'd be nice, but again, no uh, no bearing on performance. The clutch feels very good, guys. It's a very robust clutch. Uh, they actually make, uh, there's a, um, what do I want to say here? On their website, they actually tout this as a feature. It's, again, not something on the box, but there's like a reinforced clutch mechanism. They talk about some cam, uh, the cam that, that's, you know, when you flip the clutch here and it, the, the load is being distributed and everything. Apparently, and I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, a real engineer, but apparently this piece has actually um, been addressed to handle the repeated weight of chucking big swim baits. And, you know, I have a five ounce Huddleston right now. And so there's a certain amount of tension on this line from that weight just dangling there. And every time you press this, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there goes a <laughs> you're putting a lot of pressure on the system.
All right, everybody, so that's pretty much it. Uh, in a nutshell, very solid in hand, very smooth in hand, interface is good, and um, particularly if you're someone who's after uh, a reel that is a 300 size reel and it has the capacity for those larger, heavier gauge lines, but you're someone with small hands, or if you just want something that feels smaller in your large hands, the, uh, the 13 Fishing has achieved that balance by putting a large reel power and large reel spool capacity into a very compact frame. So how does it cast, you ask? It casts really well, guys. Um, my other reel that I've been comparing it to is the Shimano Corrado 300E. And you know, without a comparison, I would just I really wouldn't know if it was good, bad, or you know anything else. But having that Shimano and having had that a while, I had kind of like a, a benchmark. And the Corrado, I think by all accounts, a lot of people use that, and it's a, it's a very fine casting reel. Uh, one of the things that uh, maybe it shouldn't have, but it actually did surprise me, was that the A3, uh, with consistency, was outcasting my Corrado uh, by a small margin. Now, not 25% farther or anything like that, but far enough such that I could actually notice it with my eye. Uh, now, of course, this was using the same rod. Uh, I put the same line on both reels, and I was using the same lure. And uh, just kind of going back and forth and taking note of what kind of distance I was getting, the A3 was actually eking it out a little bit. Uh, there's two reasons, or really one reason I think it might be doing that, and that's if I, I'm going to throw a little something up in the corner of the screen here. When I spin this thing and it goes into free spool, these stock bearings are exceptional. I don't know if they're a high-end Japanese bearing or what, but they have uh, almost a full minute free spool on just a, a finger turn. And uh, compared to all my other reels, that's, that's really, really good. Uh, but more than just casting distance, guys, is also control. Uh, the A3 uses that six-pin centrifugal system. Uh, a lot of manufacturers have their own variation or their take on this, and uh, this one works uh, very well. I typically have it on three. I find that when I go down to two, even with my big baits, I start to get a little bit of overrun. But uh, with it on three and having my cast control uh, pretty open, I'm getting very, very respectable distance that I, I, I can't imagine anyone would complain about. So, uh, so that's it, everybody. Uh, Casting-wise, the A3, uh, really, really good. Great distance and uh, good control. It's been a pleasure to use. This camera is water resistant because it just started raining. But well, we're gonna wrap this up right here, guys. This is the opinion piece. This is where uh, I'm gonna tie it all together and this is the keeping it real part. Uh, that's the purpose of this channel and I hope I'm of benefit to you. Uh, this reel, I must say, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, was provided by 13 Fishing for free. Uh, but one of my stipulations was, and I refuse almost all gear from all manufacturers, but in this case, I, I really was interested in these. And I said, you know, it's going to be an ob objective review. That's what my channel is all about, and that's what I try to offer my viewers. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's free or not. If I find fault, I'm going to say those faults. If it's good, I'm going to say those good that, that it's good. And uh, if, it's, if it's moderate, if it's uh, just average, we're going to say that as well. So, guys, would I buy this reel? The answer is yes. Would I buy this reel over some of the more established nameplates, namely Daiwa and Shimano? But well, we also have, of course, Abu Garcia and Akuma. Well, here's what I can say to that question. The only other large reel that I have, a low profile large reel, I should say, is this guy right here. Uh, that proven green color, the Shimano Corrado 300E. It was just canceled, actually. Um, nice reel, it's been around for years. Uh, made in Japan, a lot of people thought that gave it you know, some kind of advantage. So this is my kind of my only other reel that I use, but it's a, it's a known, proven commodity. A lot of the big names use it. It's been around for years and it holds up. Would I buy the 13 Fishing Concept A3 over it? Not necessarily, but here's what I'd say. I would put them hand in hand, right in line. And I think that's an awesome compliment for this reel. Realistically, guys, I don't want to get carried away and act like there's some you know, magical properties of the reel. If the reel is smooth, if it casts far, if the interface is crisp, if there's not a lot of slop, then I think people, particularly a lot of times on forums, are kind of like struggling, or there's sometimes a lot of brand allegiance. They just want to stick to one brand. I don't have any of that. And so I could tell you, at the end of the day, 
practically speaking, pragmatically speaking, I could slap this reel or my other reel, that Corrado one here, and it's not gonna change my day at all. I'm gonna be casting far, I'm gonna have the power that I need, I'm gonna have a good drag, I have you know, good grip from the knobs, even though those, those things are different, uh, the knobs. Either reel, even though they're different, and they're each company's own take on a 300 size, large, low profile reel, either reel is a quality piece. But our focus here is on the 13 Fishing A3, and I think that's probably my biggest compliment to it is that to be a relatively new manufacturer and to have your series of low profile reels, to offer a large reel, to jump into the swim bait game and to have a truly refined piece in your first attempt, I think is a real win. And so that's where I would place this, this reel guys is, uh, I believe it's worth your money. I believe it's worth my money. Um, and the only kind of question mark we have, which nobody can answer yet, is are these reels still gonna be chugging along five, six, seven years from now. You know, so many people flip up reels almost like cell phones every couple of years, but realistically, our reels shouldn't break down. We, if we maintain them well, they should last many, many, many years. We know the Corrado and some of the other reels do that. Um, I see no reason why the 13 wouldn't do that as well, but that still remains to be seen. So guys, that's pretty much it. The 13 Fishing Concept A3 is a valid option for all big bait anglers, as well as inshore fishermen in a exceptionally small, low profile, 300 sized reel for pursuing those larger fish. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions on anything, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks. Let's take a close look at the Shimano 